Welcome to the third episode of The Cosmic Connection. I'm Eric Lerner, Chief Scientist at LPP Fusion. In the second episode, I described an outline of early stages of the evolution of structure in the universe, from the scale of superclusters of galaxies down to that of stars. Based on decades of research and observations, this evolution shows how just three processes, the pinch effect, gravitational contraction, and the disk generator effect could lead from an initially featureless plasma to the hierarchy of structure that we see in the universe today. In this present third episode, we're going to continue to outline this evolution and talk about the implications of these concepts for life here on Earth in the year 2020. Not only does an initially smooth, low-density plasma produce, over time, this hierarchy of structure, it moves away from equilibrium at the same time, greatly increasing energy flux, the density of energy flow. Now, equilibrium is defined as the state at which there is no net energy flow. Energy flowing in one direction at any point in space is completely canceled out by energy flowing in the opposite direction. But what we observe in real evolution is that there is a tendency for energy flow density to increase and to increase more rapidly with time. We can actually observe the energy flows at these various scales today. In the course of forming this structure, energy flux has increased 100,000 trillion times, going from the scale of primordial vortices down to that of stars. At the larger scales, energy flow is the equivalent of one-half watt, one-tenth the power of a flashlight battery, in the entire area of New York City. At the scale of a star, the energy flow is the equivalent of focusing the entire actual power consumption of New York City. 100 gigawatts of power down to the level of a football field. So there has been an enormous increase in energy flows as the scale of structure has decreased. Now what provided the energy for these concentrated energy flows? Initially, it was just the process of gravitational contraction. Like balls rolling downhill, as these plasma blobs pulled themselves together, they acquired kinetic energy from their own gravitational energy. And the plasma process converted this kinetic energy into giant flows of electrical current, basically a gigantic electric generator. Now, of course, at the level of stars, A new form of energy, nuclear fusion, came into play, and we'll discuss that in a future episode. Now, not only does each step in the process lead to increased energy flow density, but each step accelerates this move away from equilibrium, proceeds at a faster pace. The formation of the primordial vortices must have taken trillions of years, But superclusters formed in tens of billions of years, clusters of galaxies in a few billion of years, galaxies in hundreds of millions of years. As we go down in scale, the formation of star clusters, still happening today, takes hundreds of thousands to millions of years, while the final stage of the formation of a star is accomplished in about a thousand years. Now, of course, these processes are ongoing simultaneously in different parts of the universe. Stars and galaxies are forming right now. But we see the general tendency towards accelerated evolution. So, of course, this is a very different narrative of the origins of structure that we see around us than the Big Bang narrative. 
the huge explosion and expansion, the mysterious inflation, dark matter, dark energy. How does that difference in these narratives change the way people think today in the here and now on a planet gripped by multiple crises? Well, people have always looked to cosmic origin narratives to make sense of their own lives, especially in times of crisis. In the past, those narratives derived almost entirely from myth and religion. And of course, those narratives are still around. But many millions of people today look to science to try to understand the world around them. The Big Bang narrative does not give a lot of guidance to earthly crises, because ultimately it puts its emphasis on that glorious point in time at the very beginning, the creation, something that has in common with quite a few religious narratives. But what it does say about the present and the future tends to encourage despair in a crisis, not hope. The universe, after all, in this narrative, is running down from its exciting origins, expanding and cooling slowly to nothingness. Going from a state of high organization and absolute symmetry to one of chaos. It is a universe doomed to decay, where the evolution of life in human society are an insignificant transitory blip in a tiny speck of dust. Fortunately for us, this pessimistic narrative is completely scientifically wrong, as we continue to detail in our video series and elsewhere. But the evolutionary narrative I have in just the broadest way outlined here, and which is described in much greater detail in scientific papers as well as in my book, The Big Bang Never Happened. This evolutionary narrative gives us rational reasons for hope and even some broad guidance as to how to go forward. What we see is that over huge periods of time, the general tendency of the universe has been running up, not down, away from equilibrium, not towards equilibrium, towards greater structure and complexity, and above all, towards greater energy density flows, and a greater rate of acceleration of that increase in energy density. We'll see in coming episodes that this tendency characterized not only cosmic evolution of inanimate processes, but also biological evolution and even social evolution here on Earth. It shows us that accelerating evolution is the rule in the universe, and interruptions of that evolution, crises, are aberrations, although, as we will see, they're frequent and unavoidable ones. So that provides us with a rational scientific basis for hope. Crises can be and have been overcome. That's the basic tendency of nature, of universal evolution. Not only that, this scientifically supported narrative gives us pointers to how we can escape from crises. Ultimately, we have to find a way to increase energy flow density, to find sustainable ways of developing here on Earth more concentrated sources of energy. That basic principle of evolution applies in the here and now. To escape from this present crisis, we need to harness the same power that now powers the universe, fusion power. We've explained in other videos, which are listed in the comments, one of the key connections between the present global crisis and the energy problem, and we'll explain this in greater detail in this series as well. But finally, there's an equally important difference in the way that these two narratives explain the origins of what we see in the universe. The Big Bang narrative doesn't make any sense. 
A giant explosion coming out of nothingness, powered by an inflationary field we can't observe anywhere, creating a universe mostly made up of dark energy and dark matter that we also have never observed anywhere. Almost anyone's initial reaction to this is, wow, that's amazing, but it doesn't make any sense. And then cosmologists have to explain, well, you know, unless you can think in 12 dimensions, this, the universe doesn't make any sense. Or sometimes they just admit it doesn't make any sense, and that shows the limits of common sense. Now, in a social crisis, when the world seems to be coming apart, it is vital to have a rational structure to understand what's going on. If things, even in science, really don't have to make sense, well, maybe the world doesn't have to make sense either. Or we're just doomed. The Big Bang Theory is not only wrong in so many ways, it undermines the basic rationality that real science provides, a powerful tool to structuring our understanding of reality, including the reality of our own social evolution. Without that rationality, anything goes. It becomes perfectly acceptable to believe at the same time that, say, the coronavirus is a hoax, and also that it's a deadly disease concocted by Bill Gates, George Soros, the Chinese Communist Party, and the elders of Zion. In contrast to this Big Bang narrative, the narrative of universal evolution I've just outlined here does make sense. To understand it, all you have to know is some basic processes of electromagnetism and gravity, processes that you can easily research on the web. While scientific education is in a terrible condition in the United States, a century ago it was assumed that skilled workers had to have at least basic familiarity with the science underlying electrical technology. This is understanding that anyone can achieve. Plasma science has indeed developed and advanced in the past century, but it uses the same principles understandable by virtually anyone. So this narrative doesn't require any origin from nothingness, doesn't require any mysterious substances, no dark energy, no dark matter, not even any fairy dust. And thus it supports the opposite premise, that the universe does make sense, that it is therefore possible, indeed, urgent to make sense of what is happening here on Earth. To be sure, the specific evolutionary process I've described here has its limits, which I'll describe in the next episode, when we'll also move into the next phase of universal evolution, which began when stars first formed, the stage of thermonuclear evolution powered by fusion energy. And in coming episodes, we'll talk about how this evolution fits together with the laws of thermodynamics, including the second law of thermodynamics, as we now understand it. In the meantime, please visit our website, subscribe, and view our other videos. Thanks for listening. Mm -hmm.